Hey, thank you, Professor Sharia, for the introduction. So the topic today is effective high strength reinforcement and fibers on blast response of HSC columns. I want to acknowledge my co-author, Amr Hamoud, who's the master student who did all the work that I'm going to present today. So here's the presentation outline. I'm going to start with an introduction, then go over the research program overview, then go over the results uh, step by step. So we'll start with the HSC columns, high strength concrete columns, then the effect of the steel type, which was one of the main parameters we investigated, and the effect of fibers. Then we'll end with conclusions and a video. So we'll start with an introduction. Just so we are on the same page, some definitions. High strength concrete, we usually define it as concrete with a compressive strength greater or equal to 55 MPA. In this research, we're focusing on greater than 80 MPA because this is where the research gap was. High strength fiber reinforced concrete, this is just HSC with a random distribution of steel fibers. And what we're doing in this research is just using conventional fiber reinforced concrete. So we're not using any more advanced uh, FRC like UHP FRC. So we just took a regular high strength concrete at a moder moderate amount of fiber. High strength reinforcement, I'm going to call it HSS because that's what the student called it. It's steel with a yield strength greater or equal to 500 MPA. And there's actually many different types of high strength steel. So even in North America, you have all these different types of high strength steel that are somehow available in the market. What we're focusing on is the grade 100, which is a 690 MPA uh, steel, which is uh, standardized in the ASTM A1035, also known as MFX reinforcement. And it's this red curve that you're seeing here. So all these are high strength steel. You can see their behavior are quite different. So what we're focusing on is the design of columns for blast loads. If you look in a building, the most important member in that building for blast resistance is the ground story columns and their key load carrying elements in the building. Their failure, like in this uh, example over here, can cause progressive collapse. So they're very important when we look at blast design. And if you look at modern blast standards like the CSA S850 standard, they're going to give us stringent requirements for the design of these types of members. The problem is there's very limited data on the blast behavior of HSC columns. Although, as you know, high strength concrete is used very much, very often, in high-rise buildings, so there's a research gap there. And in terms of high-strength bars, it's becoming more and more commonly used in buildings. However, we have no data on how they beh behave under blast. So that's kind of the motivation for the research. The objective is to study the blast performance of reinforced concrete columns built with high-strength concrete, so that's the first thing we looked at. Then we looked at what if we combine this with high-strength steel, and finally, what happens when we add fibers. So these are the three different materials we uh, considered, HSC, HSS, and the fiber-enforced concrete. So let's go over the research program. So what we did is we tested these sort of columns like this under simulated blast loads, and in particular, we looked at these parameters. So first, we wanted to see how do these high-strength concrete columns behave compared to regular normal-strength concrete columns. So we looked first at concrete strength, and important parameters like the longitudinal steel ratio and seismic detailing. So that was the first set of tests. After that, we looked at the steel type. So what if you replace the grade 400 MPA steel with the, this grade 690 MPA steel? And finally, we looked at fibers. So in terms of materials, very quickly, so the high strength concrete, as I mentioned, we were looking above 80 MPA. So what we used is 100 MPA strength. Um, so it's just this, uh, this curve in blue. If you took, look at it in compression, you can see it doesn't have too much ductility in compression. And then we looked at HSFRC, which is ex exactly the same concrete mix. We just add 1% of these hook 10 fibers. Okay. And you can see you can improve the compressive toughness of the concrete. So that's one of the benefits. The other obvious benefit is now you can take advantage of the tensile capacity of the concrete. I'm not showing it here but you get now some tensile resistance. So both compression and tensile capacity of concrete is improving. The steel, your regular typical steel that's used in 99% uh, of construction is this grade 400 MP steel that I'm showing in blue. This is grade 60 KSI or grade 400 MPA here in Canada. The high strength steel is this one in red. So this is grade 100 KSI or 690 MPA. The actual stress strain curve looks like this. So you can see it's quite above the 690 MPA that we're assuming as a specified yield strength. So it has quite different response. So it's all, 
always nonlinear. You can see here, you don't have this yield plateau. It has much higher strength, obviously, but you lose out a bit on the ductility. So that's why we wanted to study it to see how it behaves. These are the column details that we tested. They're about 2.4 meters uh, long. They have a cross section, six inches by six inches, so 150 by 150. Um, you have different parameters, so that's the basic section. Then we looked at different concrete types, so normal strength concrete, I'm gonna call that NSC, high strength concrete, HSC, and then sometimes we added fibers, so plus fibers. So that's for the concrete. For the steel, it's with either NSS, so normal strength steel, HSS means high strength steel, and then we varied the reinforcement ratio. So these are American size bars, number four, which is a little bit larger than the 10M we use here in Canada, or number five, which is like the 15M we use in Canada. So that's for the steel, longitudinal. And then the transfers, most of the columns had this sort of detailing. This has a spacing of 75 millimeter. That corresponds to the section divided by two, so D over two. This would be like moderately ductile uh, column design when you do seismic design. For some of the columns, we use D over four, which is seismic detailing. These are much closer spaced hoops, uh, just to see what's the effect of this. So this is the nomenclature. I'm gonna go pretty fast on the results. You're probably not gonna be able to watch, catch these, just, uh, just for the sake of it. You have the concrete type, which is in the first, top of the first part of the name, so NSC or HSC. Then fiber content, if you see a 0%, that's a control <coughs> column without fiber. 1% means we added 1% fibers. Then you have the steel type, HSS means we were using high strength steel, NSS, normal strength steel. And then the rebar, longitudinal rebar size, we had 10M, number four, and number five. These are increasing in bar area. So what we did is we didn't test them under live explosive. We tested them using this equipment at the University of Ottawa, the shock tube. This can simulate the shock waves caused by detonation of high explosives. And when you look at blast, there's two types. One is very close to the building. We call that close-in explosion. Here we're looking something farther away from the building, so we call that far field blast. This is what we're simulating with the shock tube. This is basically what it looks like. So we're using pressurized air to generate the shock wave you, get, you would get it un under these blasts. So this pressurized air is built up in this driver section, that's the first part. Then we have this spool section which controls the firing of the shock wave. Once it's fired, it travels through the shock tube like this. Here we have a rigid end test frame where we can attach the specimens. Like here, you can see two meters by two meters, so we can at attach specimens here. So this is basically what we're trying to simulate, this shock wave. And this is what's gonna affect the building the most. Here you have this pressure time history. So you have a very high pressure, almost in instantaneous, that happens, and then it decays very rapidly over short duration of time, in milliseconds. Okay, so it's a very high intensity load in a short duration of time. So that's what we're trying to simulate. And we can get this shock wave and vary these parameters. So there's key parameters here. You have the peak pressure, you have the duration of this shock wave, and if you took the area under this curve, you have the impulse, it's like the blast energy. So you can modify things in the shock tube to get this. So if you play with this driver length, make it longer or shorter, you can vary the uh, positive phase duration. And then the amount of pressure you feed into the shock tube can vary the pressure. So with that, you can get different combination of pressure and impulse. And these are typical shock waves that we generated. These are the ones we used in the test. To get more data, we tested these columns under gradually increasing pressure. So you can see here, blast one, blast two, blast three, blast four. All of these had the same driver pressure. So if you look here at the bottom, it's maybe hard to see, but they have pretty much the same positive phase duration. What's happening is this peak reflected pressure is getting gradually higher and the area under these curves is getting more, we get more impulse. So you can see the impulse goes from 220 all the way to 1,030 kil kilopascal millisecond. Okay, in terms of how this affected the columns, the first one was really just to make sure everything's working. It's like an elastic shot, it doesn't really affect the column. Second one brings the steel just to yield when you had normal strength steel. Third one really damages the column, and if it survived, then we did the fourth one. So. It's a bit of a drawback of this test is we did the repeated load, so you have to keep that in mind. We didn't just do one shot, but just that's the context. So our shock tube has a two meter by two meter opening. So if we had a slab or a wall, we can just fit it onto this opening. 
In our case, we have a column, so we have to use some way to transfer that load. We use a load transfer device. It's basically sheet metal, which is attached here with some steel HSS tubes. And so here's the setup. We're dealing with columns. We try to get some fixity, so we have some partially fixed support. We just try to bolt it as much as we can. You don't get fixed fix, but you get partial fix. Then the loading, it essentially transferred this blast load as a distributed load onto the specimen like this. And then what I'm going to show you, I didn't, I thought I had 15 minutes, so I just showed, I'm going to show you displacement time history. That's all I'm going to show you. No photos, only at the end of the video. But what I'm going to show you is a bunch of displacement time histories. What we're looking at is the displacement right here at the middle of the column. So as this column deflects, you get a maximum displacement right at the middle. And as it comes back, you get a residual displacement. These are the two important parameters. Larger the displacement, you have more support rotation, more damage in the column. So as you reduce this, you're getting better performance. And finally, because we have a column, we try to apply the axial load. So you have a hydraulic jack and a strong floor, which is reacting against it. So let's go over the results. So start with the first series, just looking at high strength concrete. Let's we'll start by looking at the concrete strength. Again, what I'm showing is the displacement time history. You can think about it as that point in the middle of the column. As the column deflects, we're measuring that deflection. So you can see you get some sort of maximum deflection, and then it comes back and you get a residual deflection. So here's two columns, 40 MPA versus 100 MPA. Pretty much they're behaving almost the same. You can see almost the same displacement time history. The high strength concrete column is giving you a little bit better response but it's uh, very similar. So the first bar chart here is showing the maximum displacement. Second, the, the, the dashed one here is the residual displacement. You can see with the high strength concrete, you reduce these slightly, but not dramatically. Next important thing we know affects the column behavior. It's a column, but it's really acting in flexure. So this tension or, or steel ratio, longitudinal steel ratio is pretty important. So here we can see going from 10M to number four to number five. We're increasing the bar size. As we expect, these maximum displacements are going down and residual displacements are also going down. So this is what we expect. And this is the idea of using the high strength steel is can we get maybe the behavior that we get with this number five, 400 MPA bar with maybe a smaller bar with high strength steel. Okay. This is another parameter we know affects blast performance of columns. This is the transverse reinforcement detailing. We know it improves seismic behavior and research has shown it improves blast behavior. So this is one column with D over two spacing, the other one with D over four, you can see it improves the column behavior. So maximum displacement is going down, residual displacement is going down. And if you looked at the photos, which I'm not showing, you'll have less damage in the case of the seismically detailed column. So that's the high strength steel, uh, high strength concrete. So basically behaved as we expected. Next, let's look at the effect of the steel type. And what we found is consistently, if we took the column and we just took this exact same thing, so high strength concrete, and we're replacing the bars by high strength bars, same bar area, what we find is we get this important improvement in performance. So here's the column with normal strength steel. Here's one with high strength steel. This has number four bars. You can see maximum displacement is going down. Very importantly, residual displacement here is very low. So you're basically getting an elastic behavior here, almost elastic behavior, whereas here you're getting quite a bit of damage in the column with normal strength steel. Okay, it's expected because you're increasing the steel yield strength. If you push this further until failure, here's the column with normal strength steel. It fails in a blowout uh, sort of damage, whereas the one with high strength steel survives. It has damage, but it's still standing and can probably take some load. Okay, we saw this throughout the series. This is with the number five bars, exact same trend. You can see how you're reducing maximum and residual displacement. And we wanted to see if we use, for example, normal strength steel with number five bars, and then we replace it with high strength steel, number four bars. So it's pretty much cutting the bar area in half. The normal, this number five is like a 15 M. The number four is a little bit larger than the 10M. And what you see is no, you don't only match the performance, you get better performance. So you're able to cut the amount of steel and still get uh, good performance. And even you get even better. Uh, this is at the next shot. You can see this one survived, whereas this one failed. Last thing we looked at is the effect of the fibers. 
And again, consistently, we saw that as you add the fibers, you're improving the performance. So this is the plain HSC column. This is a fiber-reinforced concrete column with 1% fibers. Again, you see uh, reduced maximum residual displacement. This is at a moderate blast intensity. Where you see this more importantly is when the column fails. When the column fails with normal high-strength concrete, you get this sort of very large maximum displacement, very large residual displacement. The column disintegrates. Whereas the fiber-reinforced concrete column also fails, but fails in a more controlled manner. So you have less damage uh, at failure. Okay, and we saw this consistently. That was the 10 M bars. This is with number four, and this is with number five bars. So same trend overall. Okay, um, this is just um, the effect of the fibers in the, in the columns with high strength bars. So we saw the effect in the normal strength bars. In the high strength bars, you don't see the effect in the early shots because the column is pretty much behaving elastically. You're not getting too much damage in the column. So you can see the one without fiber and with fiber, they're very similar. But to, again, when the column fails, that's when the fibers kick in. They're going to prevent the major damage and you get more controlled failure. And we'll see that in the videos. This final thing is just two fiber reinforced concrete columns, one with normal strength bar, one with high strength bar, just to show you that when you're using these high strength bars, even in these fiber reinforced concrete columns, you get the, the benefits. So you're reducing maximum residual displacement. So with that, I'm at the conclusions. So uh, we saw that concrete strength has limited effects on the blast performance of columns. We saw high strength bars significantly improve blast performance. They reduce maximum residual displacement and increase blast capacity. We saw the use of fibers also improves the blast performance of HSC columns by reducing displacement. They don't increase the blast capacity, but you get much better damage tolerance, as I'm going to show you in the video, and that's the benefit. And when you combine the HSFRC and the high strength bars, you get optimal performance. So I have uh, like one minute, Sharia. Okay. Is it playing? Okay. So this is the first column with high strength concrete, normal strength bars. You can see how it fails. You see all this fragmentation fails in a very brittle way. This is the same column. All we did is we replaced with high strength bars at the same blast. You can see how it's behaving much better and can survive another blast, in fact. And you see almost behaved elastically. This is the same thing with two number five uh, normal strength bars. You can see again how it's failing. Right. This is the same thing with the high strength bars. Again, now it's a larger area of high strength bars. Behaves like elastic. You see it bounced back. Next thing we're going to see is the fibers. So I wanted you to remember the first video. We saw all this fragmentation. Now we're going to see what happens if we add the fibers. So it's also going to fail, but you're going to see the failures much more controlled. You saw the fragmentation is much reduced. Damage is very well controlled. Displacements are lower. And I think the last one is just the column with high strength bars and fibers. And same sort of idea. You can see the fragmentation is really just like some dust. You don't get any fragments. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you for your attention.